This webinar was part of the International Association for the Study of the Commons World Commons Week. Are you interested in engaging with other common scholars and practitioners around the world? Become an IASC member. Yes, this is Kathy speaking from Tsinghua University, and this is our title, and we will have three parts. Uh, the first part is uh, Professor Aurora from National University of Singapore will introduce the uh, ancient commons studies. And then Ya Hua Wang from Tsinghua University will introduce you uh, the Chinese commons studies. And then uh, finally, we will have a dialogue between West and East. And Frank and Sergio will join us to this discussion. And let's start, let's begin to listen to them. Okay. Okay, uh, good evening to America, good evening to Europe. Good morning to the rest of Asia, good afternoon to the rest of China who are tuning in. Uh, the topic assigned to me is on Asian commons research. I, I first have to say that uh, I'm only giving an overview because Asia is such a, such a big continent, very diverse with that, you know, you include China, India, Central Asia, Iran, and uh, so on. So we cannot cover much of Asia, but what I can do is to highlight what we know in the literature about Asian commons research, or at least what I know. Um, the first message I'd like to convey is uh, Asia is home to major research programs uh, on the commons. And this is not surprising because much of Asia is still dependent on commons uh, resources from fisheries, groundwater, surface water, rivers, uh, forestries, mountain ecosystem, so on and so forth. As a result of this uh, dependency, uh, we have many international institutes of research programs with their headquarters in Asia. So in Sri Lanka, we have the International Institute of Water Management. They do a lot of uh, uh, research on irrigations. Uh, we have the Fish World headquartered in Malaysia. They do a lot of fisheries research. The Mekong River Commission that looks after the Mekong River. Uh, uh, the famous Nepal irrigation research through the uh, FMIS uh, NGO, the uh, Center for International Policy Research in Bogor, uh, Indonesia, uh, ICRAF in the Philippines, Isimod in Nepal, uh, the Resources Economics Program uh, headquartered in Malaysia, and then most recently the Environmental Commons Research Program in uh, Singapore. But you know, uh, all of these groups do something on the commons, but they don't necessarily publish in the, in the commons journal. They publish in their own fisheries policy journal, but uh, they, they work on the same uh, set of themes. Now, if we uh, quickly take a look at some of the uh, commons scholars, by no means this is uh, exhaustive. These are the ones that I'm most familiar with. Uh, Lee Nostrom actually used three or four case studies out of the 10 case studies that she used in her 1990 book. Uh, three or four of them came from Asia. The first one is in the Sanghera irrigation in the Philippines. That's 400 years old. Uh, the other one, the Sri Lanka uh, fisheries that failed. Uh, the Mount Fuji uh, commons. Uh, then she uh, added eight other or seven other case studies and distilled the uh, design principles. Uh, Ruth Mainzer Dick is uh, well known in the field. She did a lot of work on irrigation in, uh, in uh, India. She pioneered this field. Danny Lam, uh, who's now in Hong Kong, did his dissertation in 1998 by comparing the performance of government run and farmer run irrigation systems. And uh, she found, he found out through a robust uh, statistical analysis that there are significant differences in the performance of government-owned and farmer-owned uh, irrigation system. And this particular study by Dali Lam has been often quoted by uh, Lee Ostrom to show that small-scale farmer-managed systems can be uh, uh, robust in terms of their performance compared to government-run irrigation systems. Uh, Prachanda Prajan, uh, is the founder of the Farmer Managed Irrigation uh, System, 
uh, in Nepal, and they collected lots of uh, Nepali irrigation systems, which uh, inspired him to put up in uh, irrigation systems database that helped the uh, research program at the Austin workshop in uh, Bloomington. Ganesh Shivakoti is also one of the well-known uh, Asian uh, irrigation scholars. He's written some of the definitive work on decentralization and management transfer. Uh, a less well-known name but very important person is Robert Tsai. Uh, he's actually the one who wrote the Sanghera irrigation in 1990 as his dissertation in Cornell University, which Lin used uh, or which inspired Lin to, to use that to show how farmers try to solve collective action problems in the commons. Halini Nahendra used to work closely with Lin. Halini is now based in India. She does a lot of work now on uh, urban commons. Uh, Arun Agrawal, which everybody knows, uh, is based in uh, Michigan, editor-in-chief of World Development, but he started his work on forestry in, uh, in India. Uh, Pranab Bardan from UC Berkeley, the former editor-in-chief of the Journal of Development Economics, he still publishes on collective action in the commons. Uh, for me, I focused work on the Philippines uh, and uh, much of comparison of China and India. One put in the Philippines, Professor Inoue in Japan, and many, many others. These are just some examples of names that you, you might be familiar with in terms of the literature. Uh, Asia also plays an active role uh, in this society, uh, starting in the Philippines in 1993, the first one that I attended. And, and because of that, I got to know Lin, and then subsequently I ended up at the workshop. And that's how I uh, ended up with my career. Then Indonesia, Japan, uh, 2013, India, 2011. And we have the series of digital conferences in Thailand. Uh, these are examples of the work that I have done uh, in China, India, but mainly on water, uh, water commons. Um, this is a lot, but I would just want to uh, pick up a few things here. Uh, some of the uh, research work that we've done on irrigation commons that look at uh, what are the factors that contribute to collective action in the commons, uh, what makes them succeed, what makes them fail. We identify many, many factors from foreign aid to uh, household characteristics to characteristics of the irrigation systems, the ones that uh, my colleague Professor Wang Yabo will be discussing uh, in, a, in a short while. Uh, but let, let me conclude my, uh, my uh, discussion with some of the uh, main challenges that we face here. As you can see, there are many scholars in uh, Asia who work in these issues, but we, we, we seldom gather and meet together, probably, unlike probably colleagues from North America or Europe, because of their closer proximity. As I said, it, uh, Asia is too big. Uh, you can fly seven hours on the plane and still be within Asia, and we, don't, we seldom uh, 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 we don't meet uh, uh, often, so we don't share a lot of things, so we, we're still uh, very much uh, doing our own stuff. But we, with this kind of webinars and more frequent meetings, uh, we, we hope that we can uh, uh, distill some truly distinctive work that you might call, uh, you know, uh, theoretical contributions from uh, scholars from Asia. But I, I doubt that we can say that there's a, a distinct Asian scholarly research. Uh, it, it's only distinct because we do work on irrigation because irrigation uh, is important in the livelihood of uh, people in Asia. Uh, some colleagues, many colleagues in India do a lot of work on forestry because that's important to the livelihood of indigenous peoples in, uh, in, in, in India. And a lot of dissertations have been published uh, in these areas. Many colleagues work on river or groundwater, but we, we have not had yet a, a, a conversation or a dialogue uh, across this different that uh, so so I think the next step for Asia is to have some some kind of a theoretical conversation of what we can learn what we who work on water can learn from fisheries or uh, those who work in forestry or those who work in coastal fisheries uh, and maybe to scale up our uh, work so I, I'm glad colleagues in the United States or in, in Europe are trying to put together all these empirical studies to uh, conceptually distill this empirical work and come up with, with uh, or I don't know with whether we would succeed in coming up with some grand theory uh, of the commons, or maybe Lina's already uh, uh, 
settle this question. There's nothing more that we can do in terms of breakthrough. We'll just add small margins uh, to what we already know in the literature, but uh, I think there are many uh, challenges uh, that uh, we see in Asia. The Commons scholars should be talking about uh, urban governance, the knowledge commons, uh, and many, many others. But, you know, uh, including global commons. I, I think we need to talk more about global commons and not just the small commons like irrigation. Uh, if we talk about climate change, you cannot uh, ignore the roles of big countries like uh, China and uh, India, their contributions. Uh, so whatever happens in the commons of China and India would have impacts around the world. So I think uh, these are some of the challenges that we need to uh, uh, pay attention to going forward. So thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll now uh, pass on the, uh, to my colleague, Professor Wang Yang Wang, who will talk about the commons research in uh, China. Okay. Let's start. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Yehua Wang. I'm a professor uh, of School of Public Policy and Management at Tsinghua University of China. Um, my research field is the uh, is natural resources management and rural governance, especially from the perspective of commons. Uh, today, I would like to talk about common study in China. First, I would like to show you there's many strategies of the commons in China. Um, and this situation stimulates the Chinese scholar, conducts a lot of research on commons. Uh, and also, uh, there's many progress in common studies in Chinese context. First, I would like to say over the past 40 years, uh, um, uh, 40 years, as you know, uh, Chinese um, GDP has uh, achieved dramatic growth. And, uh, um, it's uh, 36 times comparing with the 90s, 78, it's a dramatic growth. And at the same time, there's a lot of phenomenon um, in terms of the strategy of the commons popularly. I will show you one case, it's uh, the decline of collective education. In 40 years ago in China, um, the farmers uh, used the canal system um, as a service irrigation, but, uh, but now um, less and less uh, farmers use the uh, uh, use canal system. Uh, uh, and the canal system irrigation now has declined to one third in total the irrigation types. And the, most, uh, the majority of the households mm -hmm. now rely on leverage or well uh, irrigation. So this is a very typical tragedy of the commons because people don't like collective act action anymore and they more rely on themselves to take the water uh, from the ground, uh, from the, uh, the stream river. Uh, so this is a, a very typical case in China. And I will show you uh, there's a, a dramatic growth uh, in terms of the common study uh, in the past uh, um, three decades, and uh, there's have four uh, obvious features. The first feature is uh, there's a large number of research output with uh, rapid growth. According to the literature calculation, between 1982 to 2017, the number of Chinese literature published on commons has exceeded 68 thousand. This is a large number, uh, and the dramatic growth started from 2000. You can see the figure, it grows very fast. And the second, among the literature, uh, there's a remarkable characteristics of interdiscipline and the multi, and the multi, and the multi fields. Uh, according to our calculation, there's more than 20 disciplines related with the common study. Among them, uh, there's nine disciplines published more than one thousand. Among them, the top three is the uh, um, is uh, economics, legal studies, and education. This is the top three, the most uh, published uh, uh, in terms of discipline. And, and the third feature is a study of natural resources occupy the majority, uh, including the fishery, uh, forestry, irrigation, water management, and animal husbandry. And you can see the fishery um, and irrigation, uh, forestry, 
and the, the, the publication grow very fast. And the first, there's some more emerging common studies, especially on digital comments. You can see for, since 1993, um, some, some emerging comments publication uh, grow very fast, especially the digital comments. This is a response on the computer and internet development. And then I will uh, show you some more development in Chinese common studies under the Chinese context. In 1990, Lynn Altrum published her master work governing the commons, and this book has been translated into Chinese in 2000. And this book is very important, and this is a, a signal um, uh, when China uh, formally developed the common studies. Under inspiration by the international community uh, and Lynn Altrum and her co colleagues, in the past 10 years, uh, there's a big progress in Chinese common studies. And here I have show you some picture. In the left, this is a picture made in uh, October 2009 when, the, no, when Len, uh, Ostrom won the Nobel Prize. The left picture made in May 2011 when Len Ostrom visited Tsinghua and delivered a lecture in Tsinghua University. Some progress, progress one, the Chinese scholar has published a lot of number of common studies, uh, including the Chinese papers on the journals, as well as uh, some books in Chinese. The progress too, the Chinese scholars published more uh, papers on international journals, including uh, like uh, the World Development, International Journal of the Commons, the Policy and the Society, and so on. Progress three, uh, the Chinese scholars started building a network um, around the common study. We have uh, built a WeChat public account, and this account released many, um, uh, many uh, comments, events, like this year for celebrating this 50th anniversary of tragedy of the comments. This account has released more than 10 issues around, uh, around the common study uh, literature. And also we have organized the common scholar network uh, among more than uh, 60 senior scholars participating in. Progress four, the Chinese scholar now become closer with the ISC. Uh, in, uh, in 20 or 10 years ago, very few Chinese scholars involvement in ISC events. But now um, we become, we have set more ties with ISC. At the earlier time of this year, I was appointed as a, a national coordinator of China by ISC. And, uh, and now in official website of ISC, there are some some news from China, like this picture show the news of Chinese scholars organizing uh, a reading colloquium in this April. Now there's more and more Chinese uh, news on the website of ISC. The progress five, uh, more Chinese scholars have been in international commerce events. Uh, in last year, um, the Chinese scholar organized the first China panel in ISC 2017 in Netherlands. The Progress 6, the Chinese scholar also created an academic conference on comments. The last year at the Tsinghua University, we hosted the first comments workshop, uh, and uh, this workshop absorbing uh, absorbed more than 80 participants uh, from eight countries. And uh, tomorrow we will host uh, the second comments workshop in Tsinghua University, uh, and uh, the theme is uh, it's around the tragedy of the comments uh, celebration. So uh, this is very, uh, is, is very, uh, this is very, uh, very dramatic development in China in terms of the common study de uh, uh, development. And also I will show you one case of the common research example, how Chinese scholars works on this field. Um, as I just mentioned, there is a big decline of crack education in rural area. Uh, in the past five years, our research team has explored the reason on this tragedy of the commons, and we have identified about 10 key factors jointly explaining such a, uh, such a uh, tragedy. Among these, uh, among these uh, factors, we have identified one interesting, uh, interesting wearable field mentioned in international, uh, in international literature in terms of labor auto-migration because the labor auto-migration is a typical caricature in developing, developing countries, but not in developed countries. 
And in China, we have a large, we have a huge number of labor of the migration. And this is very, this is very Chinese characteristics. And we examined this variable and found that this is very significant to explain why there has a huge decline of collective action and explore uh, the mechanism. And this paper has pu published on world development as Ed Arrow just uh, mentioned. And, uh, uh, and I will, uh, although there's a big development in China's common studies, but there are also many uh, challenges ahead. The first, there is still lack of communication between inter uh, interdisciplinary and cross fields um, uh, without a common language. It's likely there's a tower of our, our, um, our Bible. Uh, different field scholars uh, uh, communicate in different, uh, different language, the forestry, grassland, water, irrigation, they say in a different world and use different paradigm. There's no common language to communicate. And this hinders the accumulation of knowledge. The second challenge is uh, uh, there's uh, many application orientation study, but uh, the fundamental research is not uh, enough. And this hinder our deeper understanding on some uh, strategy of the comments. And the third is uh, there's insufficient dialogue between domestic academia and the international community. This will make there's a big gap between Chinese scholar and the international community. Looking forward to the future, uh, we have three recommendations for uh, Chinese common studies. The first, uh, we should promote interdisciplinary communication. Um, uh, we, we should make different um, scholars from uh, different disciplines and, uh, uh, and uh, field communicate more uh, based on some more general framework, uh, common language to help the knowledge accommodation. And the second recommendation is uh, develop more fundamental research um, to deep uh, the understanding on Chinese phenomenon. In China, we have many hot topics around the common governance, such as the dilemma of community parking space, uh, the chaos of sharing bicycle development. Um, it's very difficult to govern, to govern, uh, to govern the new, uh, this new uh, situation. If we have more uh, fundamental research, on uh, this phenomenon that will be helpful for the policy uh, making and also contribute some more uh, new uh, theoretical to the international community. And the third, uh, we should strengthen the academic community and the international dialogue. Uh, now, uh, uh, um, uh, through the, the, the communication with the ISC and also uh, hosting more workshop like at the Qinghai University, that will build uh, more uh, uh, dialogue and the bridge the gap between the Chinese scholar and the international community. So this is some recommendation. Uh, this is my pleasure to communicate with uh, uh, the international community. We would like to have more dialogue in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, next we'll come to Frank. Frank. Five minutes, okay. Hi everyone, my name is Frank, Frank van Laro. I'm based at Utrecht University, and I am a, sco uh, a scholar of the uh, Commons, but I'm also one of the editors of the International Journal of the Commons. Um, for the purpose of this webinar, but also for the purpose of the uh, workshop that will take place tomorrow, I revisited a publication that I co-authored with Lynn Ostrom in 2007, it is called Traditions and Trends in the Study of the Commons. I created, I recreated a database of all the publications that are uh, uploaded onto Scopus uh, that mention the word commons, common pool resources, and so forth and so on. I, I'm still in the process of polishing it, so the results are not uh, conclusive, but I use that database to compare Asian common scholarship with, with the total picture. And uh, I have a couple of results that I quickly want to share with you if I can make this thing work. How does it work? At the bottom. Okay, there we go. So where do we work? Where are the universities that uh, common scholars are working? In what countries uh, are these universities located? And you can see immediately that uh, the United States stand out. Uh, this is how uh, affiliation has uh, has 
has, has, has developed over the decades. As you know, our domain uh, can arguably uh, be said to, to, to exist for 50 years, since uh, 1968 until 2018, which is why we are having uh, this, uh, this Commons workshop, uh, work, uh, <laughs> this, this Commons uh, uh, week. Uh, you can see in the in the slides that Europe is beginning to take over. What's happening? Found <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> so Europe is overtaking the United States. Uh, uh, we are. We are. We. I am from Europe. We are slightly more than uh, than, than Europeans. We can see that Africa, Latin America. Uh, Central America is, uh, and Australia are playing a marginal role in common scholarship. Asia, I don't see a lot of uh, movement uh, in trends there as, as well, but the chunk is quite a bit bigger than uh, the chunk that represents Africa, Latin America and Australia. Still uh, some work to be done there maybe. These are the countries, uh, the number of publications by authors or co-authors with affiliation in either one of these countries in Asia. You can see that China stands out. Most of these publications are from uh, authors uh, affiliated to universities in China, but also India, Japan, Israel, Hong Kong, Singapore, Indonesia, and Thailand stand out. <coughs> the number of publications per year by Asian scholars or Chinese scholars uh, can be seen in this slide. There is a growing trend, but I would urge the Asian colleagues to find their ways to the, uh, to the, to the uh, English language peer-reviewed scientific literature uh, uh, more prominently. I think uh, there is an opportunity that is being missed there. Uh, so what are the, uh, the, the disciplines that the authors uh, uh, represent? Uh, you can see that economics uh, stands out in Asia, followed by engineering and computer sciences. That uh, compared to the total database, you can see that overall economics plays a more prom prominent role than it does in China. The role of computer science and engineering is a bit less pronounced when looking at the total picture. In the 2007 article, we spoke of the big five topics and we meant uh, rangeland, irrigation, water, fisheries and forestry. These uh, topics continue to play uh, a rather big role in, uh, in what we do. What we study in Asia, 35% of all publications mention one or several of what we call the big five topics in their abstract. In the entire database, it's only 25%. So there seems to be a bit more interest in these topics in Asian uh, countries than, uh, than in the total picture. What is striking, and maybe this is the most striking element of uh, what I'm trying to, uh, to do right now, is that there is a lot of evidence of collaboration, a lot of evidence of multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary co collaboration and collaboration between the social and the natural sciences. So more than 40% of all publications show signs of multidisciplinarity. Compared to the total database, there is only 7% of such, uh, such, such forms of uh, collaboration, which I, I found shockingly low. So I'm, I'm all for collaboration. I think the commons is by definition something that should be studied by, uh, by the natural the social sciences uh, in, in collaboration. Traditionally, the commons, of course, and the study of the commons have been about uh, collective action, collaboration, organization. And we can see a continued uh, interest in that. And uh, as a consequence, uh, consequence, a lot of attention for institutions have been uh, historically uh, recorded in, uh, in, in what we do. And that continues to be the case. Institutions are mentioned in the abstract of the Asian... Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is a trend that, uh, that there is increasingly more attention for global issues uh, I, can, I can find. It's not outgoing the traditional attention for community, local, and maybe national level issues. Um, the, the divide between a role for the state, for the market, or something in between can be seen by the trends indicated in this slide. Lots of interest in Asia for, uh, for, for the state, a little bit less for the market, but that is coinciding with the overall trend for the entire database. In terms of the design principles that I have tried to capture by <coughs> means of uh, words, you can see more interest in things like rules, participation, and conflict. Uh, 
uh, this is where we do our research. So whereas we do our research, where, where we are affiliated with universities, mostly in Europe and uh, the United States, we do our research elsewhere. A lot of the time we find ourselves working in India, as you can see, but also in China. Uh, this is the case study areas clustered by continent. Most of us work in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Europe or in Asia, as you can see in this slide. I think this was about everything I had to say, so I quickly hand over the stick to, uh, to Sergio. <laughs> okay, um, I was asked to provide uh, five minutes of insight, so I will just do that. Um, if I learn how to move this again, can you tell me yes. what to do? Just a couple of notes that are hopefully inspiring, so then whoever is interested can do their, uh, his or her own research. Uh, the first note has to do with the um, global research on the design principles. The design principles is one of the central pieces of the theory of the commons, as we know it um, today. There you have the design principles. This is the result of an uh, enormous synthesizing effort carried by Elinor Ostrom um, um, and built on a number of case studies across the globe, as Carol mentioned before. Uh, the design principles hadn't been tested until uh, Elinor Ostrom suggested uh, Michael Cox, Grant Arnold and myself to, to do so. So we carried a meta-analysis of 91 uh, cases across the globe and we found that um, well, there was evidence supporting uh, the design principles in general, but some of them were uh, more supported than others. Uh, so what you can see there is the distribution of the studies uh, across the globe, and you can see that there was a, a global test in a way. Um, so around 30 studies of the, out of the, the total sample uh, came from the East. The distribution of sectors across the countries in the East wasn't um, equal. So we tended to see forest research carried in India and um, irrigation research carried in Japan, China, Nepal, and fisheries research carried in, around the Pacific uh, Islands. So the next question around the design principles was, if they don't apply uh, universally, when are they more applicable and which context? So that's an open question and invitation for people to, to, to take a look to that. Um, do the design principles apply equally in the East and the West or in certain countries with certain political histories like China? Um, some people have started doing that. There's a very interesting paper by uh, Bajo et al. 2016 in the International Journal of the Commons that I recommend uh, reading. The second note that I want to bring um, has, is, is more specific about research in the West. Um, and I think it's the current frontier of the research on the commons and it has to do with the urban commons or what some scholars have called the urban common. So it's frontier because it looks at new context, which is the cities, but also it uses a new approach to study the commons. So uh, many of the scholars who are looking at the commons in the urban context talk about commoning, which refers more to the process of coming to agreements and to creating um, uh, sharing contexts and common property regimes, if you want. And so I would encourage to, uh, the people to, to take a look to commoning a uh, keyword and, and look uh, more for that. Here you have, you can see some pictures of the actual commoning efforts that are happening around mostly Europe. So we see, we saw health centers, uh, common health centers uh, managed by neighbors and voluntary physicians in Thessaloniki in the aftermath of the economic crisis. We see urban gardens uh, emerging in Detroit in the aftermath of the huge economic crisis, the last decade of the city. We see city labs, uh, which consist mostly on participatory policy making in Madrid and Barcelona. And we are seeing increasingly 
So water remunicipalization efforts in Berlin, for example, or Italian cities. Um, this is happening in the east, in the west. Uh, an open question is whether there are any any similar uh, phenomena happening in the in the east. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then, and then, question. Okay. Yes. So we may have time for about two questions. We have a few of them piling up. So I guess yes, yes, yes. the first question is uh, about transnational agreements with resource conservation and how realistic do you all feel that countries can come together within Asia or just around the world to make conservation agreements and actually follow up and do them? Sorry, uh, so your question is not, is different from the question board, right? Yes, there are, there are a few that I can see that you, for some reason, transnational uh, Oh, just a minute. Uh, so they, they are ready now. And okay. then you can ask again, right? Sure. Uh, so I guess just how realistic do you feel that transnational agreements are around resource conservation? Do you think countries can are, are actually going to make agreements with each other about water or forestry or land use that they'll commit to and we'll see in the future for conservation, I guess in terms of like Asia and water and how, how it's just used, I guess. I can frame it a different way if it's not coming across. That's fine, I think we can, we, we understand the, con the question. The question is about prospects of cooperation, transboundary cooperation among countries. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Well, okay, I'll, I'll probably start off. Uh, the ones that I know, there are many examples of uh, uh, cross-country cooperation in, in the commons in Asia. You can think of the Amurdaya River in Central Asia, the Hindus uh, River between India and Pakistan, Singapore and Malaysia, the Mekong River, uh, the uh, Coral Marine Triangle between Papua New Guinea, Indonesia and the Philippines, uh, and, and many, many others. Of course, the, these cooperations are very difficult to, uh, to make, but uh, uh, they have not led to uh, outright conflict. Uh, on the other hand, right? they, they are slow, but something is happening. The classic one probably would be the Aral Sea in Kazakhstan, uh, in Central Asia, where it has struck. It's an environmental catastrophe. Uh, you will see satellites of the Aral Sea uh, being uh, destroyed. But now you see on the ground, many countries, five countries are cooperating to revive the uh, Aral Sea. Uh, but that said, there are also many challenges of transboundary cooperation. For example, in the Mekong uh, River, uh, China controls the headwaters, and then you have many other riparian countries. Uh, and basically, it's a collective action problem in the commons. And the countries are trying to, uh, to find ways how, how to better cooperate uh, in these resources. And there are many challenges to it, but yes, there are many examples of cooperation. Okay. Next question, uh, are there any collaborations? Uh, so just just, just okay. to back in on the, on the West and maybe compare the, the Mekong case, which Brian, myself and others worked on. Uh, did, did we offer a, pay, a paper? Or oh, we oh, no, sorry. No, so it was with some other people. Uh, we worked on a paper on hydropower development in the lower Mekong and uh, with Frank, yes, we worked on a, on a case in the Rhine River. Yeah. And so now that I think comparing both cases, um, I think maybe what stands out is precisely the role of uh, the distribution of power and the size of the, uh, of the different referring countries, right? And um, so the Mekong case is heavily um, uh, affected by the, the, the fact that one of the is China. Right? I, I don't think it's only the fact that China is 
upstream is also that China is a big, powerful country. And so whatever China does can affect a lot of um, the rest of the um, uh, cooperation dynamics in the rest of the river. Um, in the right case, I remember that the Dutch are a small but powerful country and uh, the Dutch are downstream the Rhine, so they were bearing all the pollution from the upstream countries. And uh, one could argue that part of the success of the Rhine River Commission, the International Commission to Cope with Pollution, had to do with the, the pressure that water um, drinking water associations in the, in the Netherlands made to the, 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 the Dutch government and the Dutch government in turn to the, to the International Commission. So when we look at transnational cooperation, uh, probably the politics and power dynamics are a bit more visible than when we look at uh, cooperation um, at local levels. I say more visible, not more important. If I may, I think this, this question touches upon an other important point here. You mentioned uh, commoning and urban commons being approaching in the West. I think there is also a movement away from the small scale case study types of uh, approaches to the commons that uh, they know put on the map in the 1990 book. That was all fairly small scale. But I think that Sergio is being modeled by not mentioning the initiative that he is taking a, a big role in the SESMAP initiative that is. Uh, Focusing specifically on large scale commons in the eastern baselines, indeed offshore rivers, but in other places uh, you find other uh, large scale commons that are being studied by you in your folks, right? Yeah, well, Cessna is mostly a project that Michael Cox at Dartmouth College led, uh, and, and Frank and myself and 13 other scholars had a chance to work on. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe just a quick word on the challenge of extrapolating the commons theory as we know it from local to uh, national, international context uh, has to do with, um, with concepts. So sometimes it's difficult to extrapolate how we understand some of the variables that have been used so far in the theory of the commons when we look at an uh, international context. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, there is a lot of empirical work, but also conceptual work. All right, well, that's all the time we have tonight. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Bye. this is just the start. We will have a lunch meeting and <laughs> continue the talking. <laughs> Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.